As a child, Laura adored rabbits. She grew up, became a private detective, and got herself a cute rabbit named Cinnabon. Once, she had to go on a business trip. She asked Sarah, her housekeeper, Annabelle, her cook, and Phoebe, her sister, to look after the animal. But when Laura came back, Cinnabon was gone, and all three women she had asked to look after her pet claimed they didn't know what had happened. Look at them attentively. Who is lying? It's the cook. See, it's Cinnabon's collar in her pocket. Well, Laura noticed that too. When Annabelle realized she had given herself away, she broke into a run. Laura dashed after her, but she couldn't catch up with the woman. Luckily, the girl noticed Annabelle run into a gym. She ran inside too. A security guard stopped her. Apparently, all members of this exclusive sport club were supposed to know a special passphrase to enter the facility. Laura was lucky to notice a note with a hint next to the door. Can you help Laura figure out the passphrase? That's for once in my life. And it was the correct answer. The guard let Laura through. The girl searched everywhere, but didn't find Annabelle. But wait, the showers! When she entered the bathroom, she realized there were three people taking a shower there. But a moment later, she noticed that one person only pretended to be cleaning themselves. Who was it? It's the person in the second cubicle. The water is running, but there's no foam. They don't use any soap or sponge. But, surprise, surprise, the person who pretended to be taking a shower wasn't Annabelle. Then where could the cook hide? Suddenly, Laura noticed a white sheet of paper on the floor. She picked it up. It said, Follow the white rabbit. Look around the room attentively and try to figure out where the girl should go. See those bunny ears on that door? Laura should probably try it. But there was a combination lock on the door. And is that a riddle next to it? Laura started reading. The code is a three-digit number. 682. One number here is correct and well-placed. 635. One number is correct but in the wrong place. 206. Two numbers are correct but in the wrong place. 73. Eight. Nothing here is correct. Seven, eight, zero. One number is correct, but in the wrong place. Can you help Laura figure out the code? From statements four and five, we can understand that zero is the correct number standing in the wrong place. Six can't be the number we need. Otherwise, statements 1 and 2 would contradict each other. In this case, looking at statements 2 and 3, we can conclude that the correct numbers are 2, 5, and 0, and the code is 052. Laura opened the door and saw a long corridor. It led her to a large room. There, she saw a man dressed in black. He was sitting on a throne-like chair, holding Cinnabon. Well, 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 here you are. He said, If you want to get your rabbit back, you'll have to do something for me. Laura had no choice but to agree. You see, my wife Louisa disappeared during a performance she attended a week ago. Your task will be to find her. And the man gave Laura all the details. The girl questioned three witnesses. Dorothy said she had gone home right after the performance and hadn't noticed anything weird. Alina said that she had seen Louisa leave during the break with a tall blonde man. And Anna said that she'd been on the phone with her husband and hadn't seen where Louisa had gone. Who knows something about Louisa's whereabouts? Alina, look, during the intermission, she wasn't wearing her glasses. Neither did she have her lenses on. Look at how clumsily she moved. 
But then, how could she see Louisa leaving with a map? After Laura pressed Alina, the woman cracked. She admitted that she had seen some woman pulling Louisa away, but she was afraid to tell the truth since the woman seemed extremely unfriendly. Alina gave Laura a piece of paper the woman had dropped, but whatever was written there, it was a cipher. Can you help Laura crack it? The note says, at the docks. When Laura got there, she saw three buildings. She understood she wouldn't have enough time to search all of them. She needed to choose the one where Louisa was kept, and fast. Can you help Laura? Look at the dark blue construction attentively. Next to the window, there's the word HELP scratched with some sharp object. After looking around the building, Laura found three keys. She needed to figure out which one of them fit the lock. Hurry up! Right, this is the key! The door opened, and Laura saw a woman sitting in the far corner. It was Louisa! She helped the woman to her feet, and they stumbled away. Soon, they noticed three taxis. Which car should they choose? The first one doesn't have a license plate. That's suspicious. And the driver of the second taxi is the very woman who took Louisa away a week ago. She's wearing a fake mustache and a baseball cap pretending to be a man. Laura and Louisa should choose the third taxi. But luck wasn't on their side that evening. The car broke down before they could get to Louisa's husband. They had to walk. There were three paths in front of them. One led to a swamp. Toxic gases were floating all over the surface of the water. The second road was filled with poisonous plants. And over the third path, the air was swarming with agitated wasps. Which path should Laura and Louisa opt for? the second. At least the plants can't move, so if the women are careful, they'll be able to avoid touching them. Finally, they arrived at Louisa's house. Once the man in black saw his wife, he hugged her and turned to Laura. I'm so sorry for using such methods, but I was getting desperate. I can't tell you why, but I had to keep her disappearance under wraps. That's why I chose to involve you. Thank you. I want to give something to you, but to get it, you'll need to crack this riddle. An electronics store owner came to work one day and saw that his safe was open. His money was nowhere to be found. He called the police. When a detective arrived, the store owner explained that the key to his safe was on the same keychain as the keys from his truck. Two of his employees, Andrew and Ryan, used the truck and had access to all the keys, but the men had always returned them. The detective questioned the drivers. Someone broke into your boss's safe yesterday. What do you know about this incident? Andrew said, I didn't copy the key. I wouldn't even know which one to copy. And Ryan said, I've been working here for three months and have never entered the boss's office yet. The detective understood who the thief was right away. Can you figure it out? Andrew stole the money. The detective didn't say how the criminal had opened the safe. Then how did Andrew know it? Laura got the answer right. The man handed her Cinnabon and a brand new smartphone, but it was protected by a password. When Laura tried to unlock the phone, that's what she saw. Write backward all the numbers. That sounded like a tough task. Luckily, Laura was very smart. She didn't need much time to write the correct answer and unblock the gadget. So what was the password? S-R-E-B-M-U-N-E-H-T-L-L-A. That's all the numbers written backwards. She couldn't believe her eyes. She'd been dreaming of this all her life. But to get it, she'd have to set off on a very unusual journey.
Hey, how about some tricky riddles that will put your brain to work? Ready? How fast can you solve this one? Grace has seven sons and each of them has a sister. How many children does Grace have in total? The answer is eight. I bet all the sons have the same sister, so seven sons plus one sister equals eight children. Stephen's family was away this weekend, but he was found unconscious outside his mansion. Investigators had three main suspects. All of them were in the house when it happened. The first person was Maya, but she claimed to be innocent. I was cleaning the house in the morning and I took a nap in the afternoon, she told the investigators. John, the butler, said, I was told to check the food inventory in the afternoon. And the last person to be interrogated was James, the driver. He claimed he'd been far away from the house that day. Yeah, I was driving the boss's children to a garden party. Which of these people do you think is guilty? It was James. All family members were away that weekend. So his alibi can't be true. What English word has the same pronunciation even after you take away two of its three letters? It's B. Phew, that one took some work. Look at these images and try to guess what's wrong. Duh! In the last picture, the woman is trying to eat soup with a fork. Like that would work. On a lazy Sunday afternoon, seven friends decided to go to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each, while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Using this logic, can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret is in the girl's name. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two letters E in their names, just like the word coffee. There were four pairs in the basket and four people in the room. Each person took one pair. In the end, there was still one pair left in the basket. How is that possible? The last person took a pair that was still lying in the basket. Mary's birthday was coming up and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During a massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money she had in her purse was missing. Oh no! Mary had three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed, I was having lunch in the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. The last person was Monica. She was another customer. She said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her appointment. Can you tell which one is the culprit? The thief is Catherine. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the money hidden behind the oils. Hey, it's time for a hair appointment to trim those split ends. But in this scenario, there are only two hairdressers in town who can cut your hair. This guy or this girl. Which one should you choose? The girl, of course. If there are only two hairdressers in town, that means they cut each other's hair. And judging by the haircut the guy gave the girl, it looks like he doesn't really know what he's doing. If a rooster lays an egg on top of this cabin, in which direction will it roll? Aha! Roosters don't lay eggs, so it wouldn't roll anywhere. The shopkeeper of an expensive skincare store called the police because someone had robbed his business. He didn't notice the culprit, but according to the security camera footage, there were three customers in the store at the time of the robbery. Police officers questioned each of them. 
Michael said he'd been buying some stuff for his pets. The second suspect, Kayla, was looking for ointments and some aloe vera gel. The last person, Rachel, told the interrogators she'd been busy looking for lotions. Can you tell who's lying? Michael is the culprit. The skincare store doesn't sell pet products. Duh. Peter is a rich man who owns a lot of expensive jewelry. One day, he woke up and noticed that all of it had been stolen. Uh -oh. He called a private detective to solve this case. Peter's wife Carla was the first one to be interrogated. I was showering at the time, she said nervously. Bianca, the housekeeper who had been working for the family for years, was not in the house. She said, I was cleaning the garage. The last suspect was Barb, the house chef. I was making lunch for the family, she told the detective. Can you tell who stole the jewelry? It was Barb, of course. She claimed she was cooking lunch, but the crime happened at night. A man lives on the 80th floor of a high-rise building. On rainy days, he takes the elevator all the way up. But on sunny days, he only takes the elevator halfway to his floor. And then, he takes the stairs the rest of the way. Why does he do this? Well, my friends, it so happens that the man is short. Normally, he can only reach the 40th floor button. But on rainy days, he manages to push the 80th floor button with the help of his umbrella handle. Genius, huh? On a rainy day, Miranda decided to work from home. At one point, she went to the bathroom. But when she got back, she noticed that her cell phone and no. money had been stolen right in her own house during the day. There were three people in the house at the time. Her sister Beth claimed it wasn't her. I was still asleep at the time because I'd gone to bed late yesterday. Her other sister Anna said she'd been taking a stroll in the garden when it had happened. I was watching the night-scented orchid bloom. And lastly, there was Josh, Miranda's boyfriend. I've just got home for lunch, he said. What do you think? Which of these three suspects stole Miranda's money and cell phone? Anna is the culprit, of course. Night-scented orchids only bloom at night, so she probably sneaked in and grabbed Miranda's things while the girl was away. A farmer rode into the village on Monday. He stayed in the village for four days and rode out on Monday. How is that possible? The farmer's horse is named Monday. I bet you didn't guess this one, did you? Uncle Ben's farm experienced a terrible downpour and all but 15 pigs were missing and couldn't be found. How many pigs are still in the barn? If you said 15, you got it right! So, there are three important rooms in a house. The first one is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, in which room will the police try to extinguish the fire first? The correct answer is none. Police officers don't fight fire. That's the job of firefighters. Virginia accidentally sent an email to her boyfriend instead of her best friend. She didn't want her partner to see it, so she took his laptop while he was sleeping and tried to delete the message. The laptop required a password to unlock. Hmm. Luckily, there was a post-it with a hint. History, three. Music, five. Book, two, three, one. Yellow, one. What's the passcode? Each number indicated the letter Virginia had to select in the corresponding word. The third letter in history is S. The fifth letter in music is C. 
The second, third, and first letters in book are O, O, and B. And the first letter in yellow is Y. The password is Scooby. That's all for today, folks. Yay! Hope your brain is good and functioning after all these sharp riddles. See you next time! Now, Rosie and Peter are having a date. Both of them are pathological liars. The waiter asks their ages. Peter says, I'm definitely not over 30. Rosie replies, I'm 28, and Peter is at least 5 years older than me. Peter adds, nah, Rosie is at least 29. Can you figure out their actual ages? Since we know that all statements are false, let's assume the opposite. Peter is definitely over 30. Rosie is not 28, and she's at most 4 years older than Peter. And Rosie is at most 28. Now, from the first statement, we can conclude that Peter is at least 31 years old. The second and third statements tell us that Rosie is younger than 28. We also know that the maximum gap between their ages is 4 years. Therefore, Peter is 31 years old, and Rosie is 27. Rosie arrives home from her date and makes herself a cup of hot chocolate. Suddenly, a soccer ball crashes through her window and breaks the mug. Rosie looks out the window just in time. She sees three neighbors running across the backyard, the Smith brothers. Their names are Miles, Mark, and Mike. The next morning, Rosie finds a note in her mailbox. It says this. Which one of the Smith brothers should Rosie question? The note reads, question mark, Smith. Therefore, Rosie should blame Mark. Mark apologizes to Rosie. She replies, I'm going to forgive you if you crack my riddle. So listen carefully. I came first on earth, but second in heaven. I also come twice a week, but just once in a year. I stay away for months, but you can find me in February. What am I? Can you help Mark solve this puzzle? The correct answer is the letter E. And for extra credit, will Rosie the liar actually forgive Mark? Someone robbed Rosie's house yesterday. She called the police and they questioned her neighbors. Billy said, eh, yesterday I was visiting my parents' house in another state. I just got back. Phil said, for safety reasons, I had to spend last night in a hotel room. Construction workers urgently repaired my roof during the night. Thankfully, they finished by this morning. Meanwhile, Chuck replied, eh, Sorry, I was playing video games with my friends, so I didn't notice anything suspicious at all. Who is lying? Phil. The roof reconstruction should have been finished, but it still looks like a mess. Ooh. Rosie wants to win a college sports grant, so she trains very hard every day. Take a look at her rivals. Can you predict who's going to win this particular competition? The left runner will be the first to cross the finish line. The right guy's shoelaces came undone. Meanwhile, Rosie, who's running in the middle, put her hand on her stomach because she's struggling with a cramp. That's why her chances of winning are low. The next day, Rosie buys chocolates on the way to the gym. She can't eat them in front of the others because their coach, Tina, asks all runners to stay away from sugar products. So Rosie decides to hide the chocolates in her locker. During the break, she opens her locker and finds out that the chocolates are gone. She questions four teammates. Karen says, I was washing my hair in the shower. Mm. Kelly replies, I was talking to my boyfriend on FaceTime, and he can confirm that. Mm. Zoe discussed her skills with Tina during the break. And Nina enjoyed her sugar-free salad. Who's lying? It's Karen. Her hair is dry. What?
Rosie is walking home from her training late at night. Suddenly, she sees a sad young lady sitting at a bus stop. The lady got wet in the rain, and the buses are no longer running. Rosie feels sorry for her and says, My home is nearby. Would you like to have a cup of hot tea? The lady agrees. As soon as they enter her home, Rosie turns the light on. That's when she realizes that her guest is very dangerous. How? The lady's legs are covered with wool hair. Take a look at the sky. It's a full moon. She will soon turn into a werewolf. Rosie arrives at work, so we can assume she survived the night. Unfortunately, someone locks her in the underground parking. She wanders around for a while and finds three ways out. But only one path is safe. Hungry tigers are hiding behind the first door. It's impossible to get through. The second door is guided by a virtual voice assistant reprogrammed to hate people. It threatens to destroy anyone who enters this door. And the third passage is filled with toxic gas that makes all mammals pass out immediately. Which door should Rosie choose? The second one. Those threats are words. At the end of the day, it's just a voice assistant. Rosie discovers an infinite supply of honey. But she only has a one 5-gallon jar and one 3-gallon jar. She needs to measure out exactly 4 gallons of honey, taking as few steps as possible. Can you help her out? Yep, this can be done in six steps. 1. Fill the 5-gallon jar fully. 2. Now pour the honey from the 5-gallon jar into the 3-gallon jar. After that, you still have 2 gallons of honey in the bigger jar. 3. Now empty the 3-gallon jar. 4. Transfer the 2 gallons of honey into the 3-gallon jar. 5. Fill up the bigger jar again. 6. And finally, transfer one gallon from the five gallon jar into the smaller jar. This way, we'll end up having four gallons of honey in the bigger jar. Rosie goes to a local restaurant. The manager offers her free dinner. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Rosie agrees. Here's the task You throw me out when you want to use me, and you take me in when you don't want to use me. Who am I? Rosie nails it right away. Can you solve this mystery too? The correct answer is an anchor. Now, Rosie has 26 blue socks, 13 green socks, 33 pink socks, and 12 red socks. She keeps them in her drawer. How many socks would she have to pull out in the dark to make sure she had a matching pair? The correct answer is 5. She only has 4 colors in her collection, so 5 socks will guarantee that 2 of them will be in the same color. Hey, great job! Rosie has 4 siblings. Alex, Sarah, Nina, and Willow. All five receive some gifts from their relatives on Christmas Day. Rosie opens 25 gifts, while her brother Alex, only 24. Meanwhile, Sarah opens 8 gifts, and Nina, only 1 gift. Can you predict how many gifts Willow would open? The last name in Rosie's name is Y. It's the 25th letter of the alphabet. Alex's last letter, X, is in the 24th place. The last letter in the name Sarah is H. It's the 8th letter of the alphabet. And so on. Similar odd logic also works for Willow. The letter W is 23rd. Therefore, she will open 23 gifts. Now, If I were Sarah, I might complain about only getting a third of the gifts her siblings get. But I'm not. Rosie is looking through her granny's pictures. 
Suddenly, she gets chills because she noticed a time traveler among these party guys. Can you spot this person too? This picture is from the 70s, but this guy on the left has a modern cell phone in his pocket. He's definitely not from this era. Rosie wants to get into her boyfriend's apartment building to prepare a surprise for his birthday. Unfortunately, she has forgotten the five-digit code, but she still remembers these five clues. The sum of the fifth number and the third number is 14. The fourth number is one more than the second. The first number is one less than twice the second number. The sum of the second number and the third number equal n. And finally, the sum of all five numbers is 30. Can you help her crack the code? The correct code is 74658. Here's some simple math to explain it. Amy lives in a cozy townhouse with three roommates. Jill, Alice, and Nora. Can you guess which one of these four roommates belongs to Amy? See this comb with green hair in the first room? It looks just like Nora's hair color, so it's probably her room. In the second room, there's a sock under the bed. Jill's wearing the same sock on her left foot, so let's exclude the second room too. And now, let's take a look at the fourth room. There's a decoration on the wall, a large letter A. Therefore, this could be both Amy's room and Alice's room. But how can we guess who lives there? Very simple. In the third room, there's a yellow jacket hanging on the back of the chair. And Alice is wearing yellow trousers. These are two parts of one suit. Therefore, Amy lives in the fourth room. Bob entered a coffee shop. Suddenly, he realized that he'd forgotten his wallet at home, so he didn't have any money to pay for his drink. Jake, the barista, offered Bob a deal. I'm going to tell you three facts about myself. If you manage to spot one lie, your drink is free. Bob agreed. Here's the first fact. Jake has three brothers. Next, Jake hates the color red. And the third one, he has a PhD in philosophy. Can you help Bob get his free drink? The second fact is false. Jake's phone case is red, but he said that he hated that color. Will and Frank went hiking and found a beautiful spot on a deserted beach. They set up camp to settle down for the night. The next morning, the guys got out of the tent and found out that someone had stolen all food supplies and fishing equipment. Take a look at this picture. Can you guess who stole the food? There are no animal tracks on the sand, but that doesn't prove anything. Pay attention to the water level. In the evening, it was significantly lower. Nobody stole their food. Waves washed away their bags. Can you see this carrot in the water? Someone robbed a famous jewelry shop this night between 2 and 3 a.m. In the morning, the owner called the police. He wanted this kept quiet, so he didn't share any details with the journalists. The officers have found suspects previously accused of similar robberies and asked them just one question. What were you doing last night? Peter said, Between 2 and 3 a.m., I was playing video games with my friend. He can confirm my words. Bill replied, I watched a TV show with my family and went to bed at 11 p.m. Rick said that he had spent the whole night in a nightclub because he was a DJ. Who robbed the bank? Peter. How could he know the exact time of the robbery? 
These customers look pretty innocent, but one of them is a thief. Can you guess who? This lady's hiding a pizza in her bag. Take a look at these two guys. Which one of them isn't smart? The lady is acting less smart. The pilot has a co-pilot at least. Can you find anything odd here? This pen is from another century. Fiona woke up in a creepy abandoned castle. She searched the area and found some old furniture and these four doors leading to freedom. But each door is hiding dangerous creatures. An angry dragon is waiting behind the first door. The floor behind the second door is all covered with venomous snakes. There's a gorgon behind the third door. She turns to stone everyone she looks at. And there's a wicked werewolf behind the fourth door. Can you help Fiona choose the safest door? She should take the mirror and show it to the Gorgon. She will turn herself into stone and Fiona will be able to escape through the third door. Jill used to be a professional dancer. Finally, she fulfilled her dream and opened a dance studio in Chicago. Her business gained popularity in the neighborhood very quickly. But one weekend, someone robbed the studio. The criminal took all the money and broke the mirrors. Jill called the police and they interrogated four suspects. Dan said that he'd been on a business trip in Seattle. Anna said she spent all weekend at her favorite ski resort preparing for the Winter Olympics. Alex was spending time with his dog at home. And Nina was taking care of her sick boyfriend all night. Who's lying? Anna, look at the street. It's summertime. How would she train at the ski resort? Rachel and Mike went on a date. They saw this weird restaurant and decided to check it out. The cook offered them chicken salad, mushroom soup, fish, pasta, and tacos. Can you help the guys choose the safest option? Can you see the broken glass in the salad? Probably not the healthiest option. This fish is still alive. There are worms inside this pasta. As for the soup, it contains little bugs. So, Rachel and Mike should choose the tacos. Emma wants to be a singer, so she started going to the city's most popular and expensive art school. But now, she needs to get some work to pay the bills. Emma found these three job advertisements. Brad needs a manager in his coffee shop. Sophie needs a hostess for her karaoke club on the seventh floor of the local business center. And Lisa offers a part-time job in her model agency. But first, Emma must pay $500 for a four-week training. Only one of these jobs isn't fake. Can you guess which one? There's no seventh floor in this building. Look at Lisa's picture. Someone scrawled the word scammer on her car. So Emma should choose Brad. Nancy took her son Peter to the bank to discuss his college grant. As soon as they entered the hall, Nancy pointed at these three managers and yelled, it's your father. The first manager said, miss, I've just moved from another state. I've never seen you before. The second person said, I can't be his father because I'm a woman. And the third manager said, I think we went to the same college, but I've never even talked to you. Can you spot who the real father is? The first guy, look at his face. He has the same eye color as Peter. 
Jane bought her morning coffee and headed to her office, but she suddenly realized she'd left her wallet at the checkout. She ran back to the coffee shop, but the wallet was gone. Jane saw three people standing nearby and told them, I forgot my wallet here. Have you seen it? Nick, the barista, said, Sorry, I didn't see any wallets. I was focused on the drinks. Danny, the owner, said, Lady, I'm a millionaire. I don't need to steal wallets. Kelly, the customer, said, I think I saw someone suspicious. He was holding a pink wallet. It looked exactly like yours. Can you guess which person is a thief? Kelly. Jane didn't mention the color. Tim came for a family dinner to meet the parents of his girlfriend, Hillary. He entered an empty living room and saw a big table with several chairs. Hillary offered him to take a seat. Can you guess which chair Tim should choose? There's a mug near this chair that says, World's Best Dad. So this chair belongs to Hillary's father. This chair is missing one leg. It will be embarrassing to fall in front of everybody. Someone left a red jacket on this chair. Hillary's wearing a red skirt, therefore, it's her chair. Someone put a prank pillow on this chair, so let's rule that option out. There's only one chair to choose from. It looks pretty safe. Bill got a job in the circus. He was walking down the street after his first day and noticed that he'd forgotten his phone at work. Bill went back and heard weird noises from the dressing room. So he went to check and met three clowns. Bill realized that one of them was an imposter right away. Can you spot him too? Look closer. The second clown is wearing a police badge. He must be working undercover.